Hello and welcome to this introduction to Ireland's River Basin Management Plan with the National Water Forum. I'm Finn van der Aert and as it's Science Week, I'm here to find out more about our waters and why it's so important to keep them clean. I'll be talking to some of the vital people working in this area and finding out how we can keep our rivers, lakes and oceans clean and free from pollution. But first we have a welcome and introduction from Minister Malcolm Noonan, whose job it is to create the policies and plans that protect our water. We have a big job of work ahead of us over the next number of years as we embark on a new cycle of river basin management plans. The next seven year cycle will run to 2027 and under the Water Framework Directive we hope to achieve good water status in all our water bodies across Ireland over that period. We have a huge challenge in that regard. Our rivers, our lakes, our estuaries, our coastal areas, some of them are in really poor condition and we want to work together collaboratively with communities to try to help achieve that good status. A number of weeks ago, Minister O'Brien and I launched the draft River Basin Management Plan for Ireland and we've opened a public consultation process for the next six months. If you log on to lawaters.ie, it will open a portal and show you the opportunity to participate and be involved in that conversation. But we're going further. We want to go out and meet communities on our rivers, around our lakes, in our coastal areas and on our estuaries to talk about how we can achieve good water practices in our farming, in how we manage wastewater treatment and in urban wastewater. So there's a lot of challenges ahead and we look forward to working with you on that. On this Science Week, I want to just talk a little bit about the opportunity that is there for citizen science and for people to be involved in the stories around the conservation of water in their own communities. Here in Kakenny on the River Nore, I've been working on projects around monitoring Daw Benton's baths over the last 13, 14 years and we input that data in True Back Conservation Ireland to assess the quality of the water by the presence of the bats. Also, we've been working with the local tidy towns to remove invasive species such as Himalayan balsam off the banks of the river to help stabilise stabilize the waters. So there's lots of really good way, ways you can get involved. Right across the country, people are involved in a citizen science project where they go in kick sampling into the river to test the amount of invertebrates that are there and the quality of the water thereafter. So we would love communities, schools to get involved in citizen science projects and focus this week on Citizen Science Week around biodiversity, around our water quality. So please log on to lawaters.ie. It's a fantastic resource that has been set up by the local authority waters program and that's LawPro and they do really great work right throughout the country. And we want you to be involved in this big conversation and the big stories and use citizen science to help improve our water qualities throughout the country. So today I'll be talking with Caroline Wynne. Caroline is a scientist with the Environmental Protection Agency and Caroline works to find out which of our rivers and lakes are clean or polluted and when they're polluted to find out what is the cause of that pollution. I am part of a team of scientists that work at the Environmental Protection Agency and we monitor water quality in our rivers, lakes, estuaries and coastal waters. To do this we do surveys of the biological communities in these water bodies, so we look at the animals and the plants that are living there. We also look at the chemistry of the water itself, looking for any pollutants, chemicals or nutrients. And we also look at the physical characteristics of the water bodies. So have any of these rivers or lakes had any dams built? Have they been straightened or deepened through drainage? We use all of this information to assign status to the water bodies. We assign status on a five point scale. So high is the best. High and good are what we're really aiming for, for our rivers, lakes, uh, estuaries and coastal water bodies. A lot of them are moderate and then we have some that are poor or bad and these water bodies really need us to take some action to improve their water quality. So what can you tell us about the water quality of our rivers and lakes? So about half of our rivers and lakes are in either that good or high water quality category. So that, that is good, about half of them are doing okay, they're meeting their objectives. However, half of them are not, they are at moderate poor or bad status. So that's really not ideal and we need to take measures to improve those water bodies. So in a 20 year period, we've lost nearly 400 of these sites from high status. So that's a serious problem that we need to tackle as well. 
We're also experiencing problems with increasing uh, loading of nitrogen and phosphorus in our estuaries and coastal waters. Um, and so that's a, a problem that we need to tackle in the coming plan as well. And what are the major causes of pollution? So some of the most significant pressures that have been identified on our water bodies uh, are uh, nutrient pollution pressures um, and pressures where we change the physical characteristics of our water bodies. So in terms of the nutrient pollution and the pressures that that's bringing, um, their sources include uh, wastewater treatment plants um, and, and Irish water has been identified and, and, and have been communicated with about the issues there. Um, but also we experience losses of nutrients from agricultural practices. Um, and so that's been identified as significant pressure in a large number of our water bodies for this river basin management planning cycle. Uh, in terms of the physical alterations on our water bodies, this is also a, a serious issue with um, practices such as a drainage, either for agricultural purposes or for flood protection. These are historical drainage schemes and they can impact the amount of sediment that we're seeing. Uh, some agricultural practices can increase the amount of, of sediment that can be lost to water. Um, and so we really need to think about the mitigation measures that can be put in place to ensure that uh, we prevent these deteriorations in our water bodies. It is important in this river basin management planning cycle that we identify the correct measures to put in place to prevent any deterioration to these water bodies. We need to put the right measure in the right place. Our final guest is Thomas Carolyn, who works with the Local Authority Water Programme. He works with local communities, helping them get involved, learning more about their local rivers and what they can do to help protect them. What sort of actions do communities take? The type of activities that communities do depends on where they live and where the local river is situated. If it's in a town or in the countryside. Um, it also depends on what the communities themselves are interested in. Many groups carry out weekly or monthly cleanups, um, taking out a huge amount of litter and rubbish from their local waterways. This really benefits the river, keeps it clean and benefits the wildlife that live in the river. As Caroline mentioned, 50% of rivers need restoration and 50% need protection. So some community groups decide to get involved in monitoring programs, become citizen science, scientists themselves. Um, they sample the macroinvertebrates, or the small animals in the river, and the chemistry. And this shows how healthy the river is. Communities that are particularly interested in the heritage of the local river often run water-based education programs and initiatives in the wider community and with local schools. Some actions focus on improving the habitat in the River for fish and other wildlife, like the removal of invasive species, or else the planting of vegetation on the banks, or else just fencing off areas to allow vegetation to grow naturally. So how can people learn more and get involved? If people go on to catchments.ie, they can see examples of community projects and initiatives from all over the country. It's also a great educational resource with tons of information that's useful for schools and communities alike. People can also go onto the local website and find out who their local community water officer is and contact them to find out more ways to get involved. Over the next six months, we'll be holding meetings across the country on the draft river basin management plan and we'll be inviting people to attend to hear more about the plan and how they can get involved in taking care of their rivers. So there you have it folks, a little bit of an insight into the kind of work that goes into keeping our waters clean and why it's so important. And now we're going to hear from two scientists on the ecological wonders of water. If we look around this beautiful site, we have our trees, we have our plants, we have our stones, we have the water. It all works together as an entire ecosystem and then all of the living components of that are part of that ecosystem, all needing water. Caroline is standing in a fast flowing area and that's known as a riffle. And a riffle is basically an area where the water is moving over the stones and moving fast. By dislodging that substrate, Caroline is getting the little guys that cling on to come into our tray and we can take a look. So let's do that. Okay, so we're doctors, but we're not the type of doctor that you would come to if you're sick, but we like to find out how healthy a river is. And there's a couple of things we can check. So I know you've heard a little bit already about the pH of a river and how it's very important that that's kept between about six and eight uh, to maintain a healthy river. Also oxygen in the water is really, really important because all of the insects and the fish and everything that lives in the river needs oxygen to survive. So we can check the oxygen, 
But also what gives us a really good idea of how healthy a river is, is what lives there. And the macro invertebrates are the little bugs that live in the silt and the sediment in the river. So that's why we're here and we're going to have a look in the tray and see if we can see some bioindicators. So some macro invertebrates that tell us whether the river has lots of oxygen and is really healthy or could do with a little bit more work. So the more things like mayflies and stoneflies that have gills on the outside that we find, we know that that's going to be really good quality water because they love clean water, they love lots of oxygen and they can cling on really tightly to those rocks. So take a look at the large messy invertebrate that's just crossing the tray there. This one is a cased caddisfly and it's really exciting and it's quite magical because it uses large plant fragments or whatever it finds in the river to make a case for its body by itself. Some of the species have very distinct case shapes and types and we can identify what species they are by looking at that. Like the mayfly we saw before, these hatch out as flies and they look pretty much like small moths and then they mate, they lay the eggs and the cycle starts over again but most of their life cycle is spent in the river. And these cased caddists are generally indicative of decent water quality so if they're present in good numbers we know that we have good water quality and plenty of oxygen for what lives there. We start to get things like worms and snails and leeches and we lose things like mayflies and stoneflies, then we know that our site is impacted or it's polluted. So something has come in there and messed up our ecosystem and affected it. And then generally speaking, in a lot of cases, we get a bit of everything and that's good because a bit of everything means that everything's happy there. So what we can do then is we can come along, we can do this and we can say, well, this water is excellent quality this one's not so good so we need to work a little bit harder to get it back and this one is really poor so we have to put a lot of effort into this. Okay so we can see that we have lots of life on our tray here which is great and sometimes when we look around none of us live too far from a river or a lake and there's lots of water around us but don't forget that's only a really small proportion of the water on the planet and that water can only sustain life if it's unpolluted and clean. Unfortunately, the magic of our water is under threat and all the life that lives in our rivers and lakes because we're in the middle of a biodiversity crisis. We all have a part to play and we can turn it around. This beautiful site can be kept clean and healthy by all of us working together. The cleaner we can keep this site, the more diversity we have in terms of macroinvertebrates and that plays its part all the way up the food chain for the fish and everything else. If we can do that, we can keep the magic of water alive. Thank you so much for joining me for this special Science Week National Water Forum video and I hope you got just a little bit of an idea of how important and vital our waters are. And as it's Science Week, why not see about what you can do to help? Ask your parents or your teachers and see if you can arrange a cleanup for your local lake, river or beach. Remember you can go to catchment.ie for more information. I'm Finn Vanderaar and thank you so much for joining me today.